Hello guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video. In today's video I wanted to talk to you about something that I feel quite passionate about and something that I believe needs attention bringing to it. So if you know me, you know that I don't personally support chain pet stores and the selling of live animals in chain pet stores or any other pet store for that matter. That is my personal opinion, I choose not to support that and I also don't encourage you to go to pet stores and purchase animals either. However, realistically I do appreciate that whilst there is unfortunately still a supply and demand for animals in pet stores, they are going to continue to sell them so there's not too much else we can do besides choosing not to support them and not to purchase animals from them when it comes to them selling animals but even though they are probably going to continue selling animals for quite a while yet, I do believe these do need to be living in suitable housing conditions and personally that's something that I don't think Pets at Home is providing their animals with at the moment. So recently it was brought to my attention by one of my followers on Twitter that Pets at Home had plans to redesign and redo all of their stores nationwide with a new design and this new design, the heavily featured thing about this design was their new interactive pet village. So when I saw this I was quite shocked. I think to anyone that is an animal lover and does have high standards of animal welfare it's quite clear to see that this is a significant downgrade from the current enclosures they display their animals in in store. There has been significant changes to the enclosures, which I will talk about in a second, but just from looking at them you can see that they are drastically different to the enclosures they had before. So when this was first brought to my attention, this new design was only in two stores nationwide, which is Chesterfield and Stockport, but I've now been seeing it in many other stores throughout the UK and many of you have also been contacting me to say that your local stores also had this new design and that you're not happy with it either, so it is unfortunate they are continuing to roll this out and we will get into their response later on in the video, but they are making more stores have this design nationwide and it is very disappointing. So the redesign itself has many different features, but the one that I'm most interested in is the new interactive pet village, which is where the actual animals in the store are kept. All of the small furries, like the rabbits, the guinea pigs, the rats, the hamsters, the gerbils, are all kept in this interactive pet village. So if you don't live in the UK and you're not familiar with Pets at Home, it is our big chain pet store, our primary chain pet store that we have. And I know standards throughout the world are very different, but I would say that the standards of the enclosures they had before Obviously they weren't perfect and it's not ideal, but I'd say compared to some pet stores in the UK and also some American ones, the enclosures weren't as bad as they could be and they were definitely, in my opinion, better than what they have now. So just to give you some reference, this is what the rabbit enclosures looked like before they were redesigned. Not perfect, not ideal, but I would say they are much more spacious than what we're going to get into in a minute, but this is what they did look like and this is generally what the small pet section looked like with all the rats and the hamsters before they did the redesign. So I will insert a clip of what the new redesign looks like. This is what they're planning to make every single store in the UK look like with their new designs. And on an article I was reading about this when I first found out it says, children are also well catered for with an array of interactive and educational child friendly events. Interactive tunnels surround the pet village where kids can crawl, play and come face to face with small furries. Animal lovers can even celebrate with a pets at home birthday party. Peter Pritchard, the CEO of Pets at Home, comments, I'm delighted to announce the launch of our new store of the future in Stockport and Chesterfield. We've always known that our stores are much more than just a convenient shop for pets and now we're providing them with a million dollar pound makeover they deserve. So to me, this reads as though they have redesigned their enclosures to tailor them towards children and entice children in the stores with a promise of it being a playground and a fun experience where they can come face to face with these small animals, with the tunnels and they can run around and play. And to me this does not seem like the suitable environment for small animals, but also prey species like they sell in their stores. So the majority of the animals they have in their small furry section are prey species like rabbits and guinea pigs. These can become highly stressed out and easily stressed out by loud noises, sudden movements like a dog or a child moving quickly past their enclosure. And they can develop health related issues due to this like GI stasis, rabbits are very prone to that, and ultimately they can die from stress because of this. So I don't personally believe that adapting these enclosures in store to suit children is also having the rabbits and the guinea pigs best interest at heart because they need somewhere they can go to and feel safe and secure and escape anything that is stressing them out, and I don't believe that turning their enclosures into a playground environment is necessarily helping towards that. Having tunnels that go underneath the rabbits doesn't give them anywhere that they can go to to feel safe, and having children running around encouraging them to treat it like a playground is not going to make these animals feel safe. 
So although I do appreciate that some parents will have kids that will come in and have a silent, respectful appreciation for these animals, I think advertising it to the masses as a playground environment, these kids aren't going to know the difference between an outside playground where they are allowed to run around and be noisy and play with each other and advertising this as a playground environment too, they're not going to know the difference and the parents aren't really going to always know that they shouldn't allow their kids to be loud around prey species, so I think it is just setting everything up for an utter nightmare. So all prey species such as guinea pigs and rabbits should have somewhere they can retreat to if they feel scared or threatened by a predator or something they deem scary and even though this new design has this burrow system where they can go underground into the burrows, personally I don't feel like this provides them with enough privacy because this does have viewing windows on the sides where the kids can kind of lift the hatch and view the rabbits inside of the burrow system and personally I don't feel like this gives them anywhere they can go to to hide because they can still be bothered by people looking at them and possibly even like banging on the glass or things so personally I don't feel like this is giving them what they need. So personally the first reason I'm not too happy with this new redesign is the fact that it is targeted towards children. They are making it a commodity that children can come in and play and they are targeting these animals towards children when in reality these pets are a lifetime commitment for adults that children can't legally buy them and it's just advertising them as pets towards small children which I personally don't agree with. So personally, even though I'm not going to be going to a chain pet store and purchasing an animal and I don't encourage you to do so either, the reality is that someone is going to come in and buy these animals that have potentially already been highly stressed out by this environment and when they bring them home, this is not going to give them the best start to life and the best relationship with their new owners because they've already possibly been highly stressed out by this new redesign. So another reason that I'm not happy with this new redesign is that I feel like it is a massive step back in terms of how much space they give them in the stores. Although the previous designs weren't perfect, it does seem like they gave them a lot more floor space. This is a picture of the rabbit enclosures in the old designs, and I did feel like they had a lot more unbroken floor space, whereas this is the new enclosure for the rabbits, and although it looks nice and pretty, I do feel like they favoured having the tunnel system underneath for less floor space. And although they have this weird stairs burrow system that does look cool, I feel like this has drastically reduced the floor space and they are keeping up to about six rabbits in here at one time and it just looks cramped just when looking at it. So the minimum floor space recommended by the RWAF for rabbits in the UK is 3 by 2 by one meters for a pair of rabbits and although I do appreciate these are in-store rabbits that won't be living there forever, I do feel like they should be given as much space as possible or possibly less rabbits put into that space because sometimes they can be there for up to a few weeks or a few months and they should be comfortable whilst they are in the stores. At the very least, a rabbit should be able to completely stretch out and hop three to four times across the length of the enclosure and if we look at this picture here, I personally don't believe this rabbit in this picture is able to do three to four hops across the entire length of the enclosure. So not only am I disappointed with the new enclosures for the rabbits and the guinea pigs, but I'm also really disappointed with how they've designed the new enclosures for the hamsters and the rats and the smaller animals as well. So when I first saw the new redesign for the hamster enclosures, I was a bit confused because they did look like they were vertical instead of horizontal, and hamsters can't utilise all of that vertical space. Hamsters are not necessarily the biggest climbers, so I was confused why they seemed to have switched them this way round instead of having them horizontal. And my hopes were that they were making them slightly smaller, just so they could put single Syrian hamsters in each individual enclosure, but unfortunately that is not the case. So as you probably know, Syrian hamsters are a solitary species, and as they get older, they will start to fight with their siblings and they can kill each other, so they do need to be housed alone, and sometimes pet stores don't do this. They do keep them in groups, which does worry me a bit, and I was hoping they were making these enclosures smaller to accommodate for splitting up the Syrian hamsters, but as you can see by the pictures, they are keeping up to about five or six Syrian hamsters in each of these enclosures, which I personally think is not acceptable. As you can see by this picture, there are multiple Syrian hamsters living in this enclosure, and they seem to have upturned the wheel because there's not too much space for them to move around. They don't have any hides, all they have is that Benley bridge, so I am really disappointed with these pictures that one of my subscribers sent me because it does seem like they have taken major steps backwards in giving the animals enrichment and giving them everything they need in an enclosure to be happy and to thrive. Something that did make me laugh is that in these new designs I felt the need to add disclaimers everywhere in signs which if you feel like you need to add a disclaimer you're probably doing something wrong 
and it says the size of our small animal housing either exceeds or conforms to the relevant legal guidelines, which means they've got all the space they need and a little more. Which, it doesn't take a genius to look at these pictures and see that these hamsters do not have enough space. This is well below the minimum for owning a hamster, but I do appreciate that the legal guidelines are very, very small. Personally, I think they do need to be changed, but that's definitely something that is way out of my hands. But just looking at these, you can see they don't have much space at all. So for them to say this is a massive, bold statement. Something else that I personally believe is a massive step back is they've replaced all of the hides they had before. Before they would just use ones that they had that they sold in the stores. And they've replaced them for these acrylic ones, which you can see through. Now I'm guessing this is some sort of marketing ploy to make sure that customers can see the animals. At all times, if they want to buy them, they can still see them when they're asleep. But to me this is a massive red flag because animals should have somewhere safe and secure they can hide and see-through hides don't always provide this. If they're feeling scared they're not going to feel secure if they can still see the thing that's scaring them so these hides are not great, they're not ideal and it doesn't look like they're providing them with any other alternative which is really disappointing. As you can see by this picture they're also using these acrylic hides for the rats and rats are significantly bigger than Syrian hamsters or dwarf hamsters and there's multiple rats sleeping in this hide. I believe this is the only ones they provided them with so obviously they have no choice but to sleep in these and it looks quite cramped, it doesn't take a genius once again to see how cramped this is and that they're all packed in there and that cannot be comfortable for them so I do wish they would give them bigger, better hides that they can actually feel safe and secure in. So obviously my heart and my channel does lie with rats and I did want to quickly touch on the rat enclosures for years people have been telling pets at home to ditch having them in glass tanks. They don't provide them with enough ventilation which can quickly lead to them having a respiratory infection because of the build up of the ammonia in the tank. And I know plenty of people personally that have got rats and pets at home and they have come with a respiratory infection or even pneumonia so for years people have been begging pets at home to stop keeping their rats in tanks. And unfortunately it seems like pets at home have not taken this advice, they are still keeping their rats in tanks. And this specific photo does make me really sad because before the rats would at least have hammocks and ropes and things for them to climb on in the enclosure, as you can see by this picture of one specific store that has the rats, they are all crammed into that little acrylic house and all they have in there is a willow ball. They have nothing to climb on, no enrichment and this does deeply sadden me. So if you feel the same way that I do and you are outraged by these changes, there are a few things that you can do to try and make a difference. The first one is I have made a change.org petition. I will leave it linked in the description if you want to go and take a look. It does have all of the information I've talked about in this video written on there for you to read as well, but I made this petition as soon as I was made aware of these changes, and it does have close to 5,000 signatures, which is great, but please don't stop sharing this and signing this because hopefully it will make some sort of difference and hopefully it does at least spread awareness of these issues. The next thing you can do is get in touch with the CEO of Pets at Home. I will leave his email in the description. He has been sent this petition in the past, but in the next few weeks I will be making more attempts to contact him and just to tell him how I feel, as well as the 5,000 odd people that have signed the petition. The last thing you can do in this is just a suggestion, but something that I would do if my local store does get this new redesign is just to stop shopping there. Again, just a suggestion, but I don't personally buy animals from pets at home. Sometimes I will have to go in there to buy certain things for my rats or my mice. And if my local store does get this redesign, I know personally I will not be supporting them anymore and I won't be visiting that local store anymore. Which is a shame because sometimes I do like to go in there to have a look. I don't necessarily purchase from there a whole lot, but I definitely won't be doing that in the future if they do get this new redesign. So yeah, if you're wondering, at this current time I've not had any correspondence really with pets at home. The CEO, Peter Pritchard, has not contacted me about the petition and I've not heard anything back from him. So if I do get a reply, we'll update it on the petition website. But so far I've not had much response from pets at home. Now, I have had a few correspondences from the Pets at Home Twitter account, and I appreciate these are just people hired and they're just doing their job. They're not necessarily high enough up to make any changes. But this is some of the correspondences I've had from them anyway. They do assure me that the pet experts they have hired are doing their job also making sure that the animal standards are kept up and that these enclosures are perfectly fine, which I thought they were going to say that because they're not going to go back on spending millions of pounds and just rip these enclosures out straight away just because someone on the internet or 5,000 people on the internet think they should, so I do understand that. However, I do wish they would rethink these designs, possibly redesign them, possibly not roll them out nationwide and stop doing them in other stores, but unless we make more noise about this, I don't think that's also going to become the case. 
So something that I did want to mention that I forgot to is this gem of a screenshot from customer support claiming that it is okay for their enclosures to be this small because they do exercise the hamsters outside of the enclosures. And I've had multiple employees from Pets at Home contact me and tell me that this never happens and this is definitely not the case so I thought that was quite interesting. I did also have one of you guys contact me and say that within the 10 minutes you were in your local store, which has had the new redesign, there was kids running around and banging on the glass of the enclosure, so that does not make me feel any better about the fact that these enclosures are being monitored and that the animals are not being stressed out. So obviously I've not had an official response from Pets at Home yet, if I do get one I will let you know on Twitter or something, but I have had employees of Pets at Home contact me, obviously I will keep them anonymous, but They've told me that people are talking about this, the employees of the stores are talking and talking about the petition, which I guess is a good thing, but many of them are also behind me on this and don't agree with the new redesigns. When I first started this petition, it did gain some traction with the mainstream media. It did get picked up by The Independent and also The Metro, who wrote articles about this and covered the petition. And they also contacted the RSPCA, and they've also agreed that these new enclosures could potentially traumatise these new animals in the early stages of life. So Pets at Home did respond to the news articles and this was their response. It says, we care deeply about all the pets in our care and their welfare is the number one priority for all of our colleagues. All our enclosures exceed minimum pet shop licensing standards and our new designs provide nearly twice as much space for each pet than the minimum regulations stipulate. This also means that each pet has the correct provision for its requirements and includes space for them to relax and hide. They added that the store does not allow children to hang on the glass or make excessive noise around the pets. Should this ever happen, our colleagues will always react swiftly in the best interest of pet welfare. The spokesperson continued, the independent inspections carried out by our local authorities in the area where our new store design is featured have been supportive and the design itself developed in full conjunction with our qualified pet team and we feel are the best experts to advise on this topic. So that was Pets at Home's response to the media. Personally, I'd like to know what kind of qualifications and experiences pet experts have because it doesn't take being a pet expert to look at these enclosures. You could just be a regular person on the street that just has a love for animals and find something wrong with them. So I did find that really interesting. So yeah, I just wanted to make you guys aware of the current situation. Even if your local store does not have this redesign yet, I promise you it probably is coming to your store at some point. They are trying to do every single store in the UK, which is disappointing and I do hope they reconsider. So yeah, I think that's everything that I wanted to say about this topic. Thank you for sitting here and listening to me ramble on. I'm sure I probably forgot to say something, but I did feel really passionate about this and I wanted to make you guys aware too. As I said before, the petition will be linked down in the description if you want to check it out. Please make sure to subscribe to see any more animal related videos from me, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!